Well, this would definitely stand out in the school drop-off lane, right? Now, this is a brand new Honda Pilot 2023 Trail Sport model, which is the brand new trim level for this year. And today, I'm going to take you on a complete tour of this vehicle. Thanks to Norm Reeves Honda of Port Charlotte, Florida. We're going to check it out from the exterior, interior, play with some technology on the inside. At the end of this video, you're going to go for a spin with me. So if that's something that interests you, check out the rest of my channel. My name is Matt. I post two car reviews every single week. Don't forget to subscribe and leave me a like after you watch this video. I'm not sure what the message is here, but in the last few years, manufacturers are starting to come up with this off-road themed vehicles. Now that's an XRT and Hyundai, that's an X Pro line at Kia. Uh, that is the Rock Creek edition for the Pathfinder. And of course, Toyota had their TRD Pro for years and years and years. But Honda introduced their Trail Sport last year with the Passport. Now this year we have it on the Pilot, but it is definitely a lot more than the, just the design package that you've seen on some of the other vehicles. And, you know, I was watching some of the videos and a couple of weeks ago, a group of uh, social media influencers, YouTubers, get invited by Honda to take a test drive of this brand new Pilot Trail Sport on an actual trail in Sedona, Arizona. Now, I wasn't invited. I don't have enough subscribers. I get it. I hope you're going to help me out with that. So if you're watching this video, I want to do a plug hit that subscribe button and it's going to help me out a lot. Maybe next time when they're introducing a new vehicle, I'm going to be actually invited to that. But let's take a look at what we have here. So I like the uh, shape of this new generation. This is the fourth generation Honda Pilot. I love the sonic gray color. Now that color has been around for a few years with Honda, really popular. And I actually like the combination of this piano black with the sonic gray. I'm not sure how durable it's going to be when you're actually going to take it off-road, but it looks pretty cool. Now, this one also has this lounge package, which includes this decal right here, and it's going to help from you being blinded by the sun, so that prevents from the reflection to hit your eyes when you're taking it off-road. So we have this pretty large grill over here, and you can see this orange sport trail trim piece right here. So that tells you that this is the trail sport model. You also have this front view camera and this is not just a 360 camera it also serves as a trail camera and it's got a little squirting thing so if it does get dirty it's going to be able to clean it up with squirting some uh, fluid on there now a huge honda logo over here behind this some of the honda sensing technology heights some of it hides underneath these sensors that are above this rear view mirror over there a lot of open spaces a lot of air can get in there with help with cooling off the engines. Nice lights, narrow, more aggressive lights. You have the daytime running lights over here, and you have this kind of claw design with this trim piece going inside of the line. If you scroll down here, you have this air intake, right? The air vent, air curtain that helps channel the air for uh, better aerodynamics. And underneath here, you do have a set of fog lights. Now, one cool thing about it, not only this vehicle sits about an inch taller than inch higher off the ground than the regular uh, pilot but it's also equipped with a set of real skid plates so let me actually knock on this so you can hear it hear that this is the sound of steel now this is the real steel real deal you can take it off road you can actually bottom it out and can support the weight of the vehicle um, so if you are planning on do that you don't have to worry about damaging the engine the transmission the gas tank which is all covered with those skid plates underneath here and then right here you have this mesh black uh, grill a little bit of this uh, gunpowder metal color and then you can see this trim piece right over here in this matte black that's going to continue throughout the whole vehicle 
No. So let's check out what's underneath the hood. But before we do that, let's take a quick look at it. I'm not going to dwell on it. I complained about it enough in my previous video, but it does have a prop stick. I think it should definitely have the hood struts. It would benefit greatly from having those. Now, what we have here is a 3.5 liter V6, 24 valve aluminum head and block engines. It, it looks on paper very similar to the previous one, but now it is a dual overhead cam. So it is a completely new engine from Honda. It does uh, produce 285 horsepower, 262 pound feet of torque. It also is made it to a new transmission. They ditched the nine speed in favor of a 10 speed transmission for this year, which is great. It does have seven different drive modes and this improved IVTM4 all wheel drive system, which we're gonna talk about a little bit while driving this vehicle. Wow. I really dig the design of this vehicle. It looks so much better than the previous generation one. And I know it because I own a 2019 one. So I like this flat hood. I like how more boxy it looks, more muscular, and especially in this trim. And I got to tell you, I've tested out the EXL. I'm going to test out the uh, Elite next. But uh, so far, this is my favorite trim. I'll tell you what, because this gives you an ability to take it off the beaten path. If you're going camping, if you're going fishing, if you're going to get to your favorite hiking spot, you can definitely feel more confident doing it with this trim trim level than with any other trim levels on the pilot now they're all uh, if they have the four-wheel drive they're going to be equipped with the same all-wheel drive however you know they're not going to have this off-road tune suspension they're not going to have these off-road tires now uh, let's talk about these a little bit so they're uh, exclusive to this trim wheels and tire package so they have the trail sport wheels 18 inch uh, as far as the design as far as the color they're a little bit smaller in diameter that you'll find on the uh, uh, touring and touring elite because there's an 18 versus 20 continental terrain contacts a little bit more aggressive tire now they are aggressive but they still are not too aggressive so this should be nice and quiet on the road if you're wondering what size it is it is 265 by 60 that's the size of the tires now honda claims it does have this off-road tuned suspension and this new and improved ivtm4 system which by the way this is uh, starting off as a front wheel drive vehicle but with the ivtm4 it can send up to 70 percent of the power to the rear wheels and what's cool about it that if you get stuck it can send a hundred percent of that 70 percent to either of those wheels so definitely a huge improvement over the previous one and like i said i've seen the test that it works really really good now if you look at the design of it this one has the design package the launch launch package which includes this wider flares in i, I think the regular one has the same color uh, wheel well dressing right here if you will but they're not as exposed on on this particular one it also has this trim piece that uh, is part of this launch package now the same color Color, the matte black is surrounding the windows over here and then you have the uh, a little bit more exposed a higher profile as far as the roof rails and the lounge package also includes the crossbars now what else we have here we do have this uh, black mirrors now those are the piano black mirrors that includes the turn signal blind spot assist and the camera underneath here uh, of course we do have this uh, smart entry system with this pilot so as long as the key the key is inside the vehicle right now but as long as you have the key on it you can lock it and unlock it without um, you know pressing any of the buttons on it overall the design of this vehicle is great it is also 3.4 inches longer well so that makes up for a lot more room inside of the second and the third row seat like you've seen on the exl but we're going to check this one out because it does have a little bit different seating configuration but before we get in the inside let's check out the back a lot to like in the back here i like the design i like how straight down it is it gives you a lot more room inside of this vehicle which we're going to check it out in just a little bit but let's take a look at the design i like this gate spoiler third brake light kind of wish they hit that wiper underneath here for some reason they left it out here honda logo in the uh, chrome right so this is the only chrome piece that you see the honda log in front and the back they could have kind of blacked it out in my opinion but that never mind it looks good pilot spelled out in this trim piece over here the lights look like they're connected with this trim piece over here and the lights are uh, mostly led now they do have the regular uh, turn signal over here the incandescent one but that's not a huge deal uh, backup camera again with this washing system right over here trail sports trim and then scrolling down over here you have this matte black with this uh, like polished aluminum trim piece and check this out it does have the trailer hitch it can tow up to 5,000 pounds and another thing that it does have it does have a full-size spare tire right underneath here now this is the same tire but it, it, on a steel wheel so it doesn't have that fancy uh, rim like you have 
on uh, the vehicle itself. It does have a power tailgate and you can actually set up the height of it by basically uh, pressing the button on. So let's say I want it to be set to this height only because my garage is not tall enough. All I'm gonna do is press this button and uh, wait till it beeps twice. And now when I close it and reopen it, it's only gonna go up to such height. So let's check this out if it worked. Boom, that's it, right? Now, if you wanna lift it up, you can manually lift it up all the way and press it and hold it again. Beep, beep, and then it's set. So let's check out how much room we have. By the way, I was meaning to bring my measuring tape so I can show you that it does actually have more room because it's kind of hard to see on the camera, but it does have about uh, three cubic feet more cargo space in the back that did on the previous generation one. Uh, now this one also has this uh, protective mat and I want to show you how that uh, opens up. It's pretty cool actually. Underneath here you do have some storage. Now it's not as deep as you've seen on the other ones that's because of the spare tire that's being located underneath the vehicle. Uh, so what else do we have here? We do have the uh, power outlet right underneath here. If you open this up, that's where your uh, floor jack is to uh, lifting the vehicle up if you want to change the tire. And of course the seats do fold down. So all you have to do is pull on this and then let it drop. You do the same thing with the second one. That's how much room you have. Now you can also open this cargo mat up and voila. So in case you don't want to uh, soil it with uh, mud or anything like this, this is a great feature to have. Now it also comes with this rear seat protector. Now this is the part of this lounge package, so it doesn't come standard, but I actually like that feature as well. Uh, well, that whole length of the vehicle and then increase of the wheelbase definitely translates into the room that you have inside of this. Now I'm six feet tall. I'm sitting very comfortably. I have plenty of headroom, even though this one has this panoramic moonroof, which looks great, by the way. I do have plenty of shoulder room. The seats are nice and comfortable and I can adjust the seat front and back if I want it to be nice and give a little bit more space to the passengers in the back. So let's check out how this trail sport looks on check the inside. Check this out, starting with the door panel over here. First of all, what you see is this contrast stitching, which is an orange, and that's the theme throughout the vehicle. So the trail sport uh, badge is an orange and you're gonna see some of the orange accents inside of here. Now, uh, I do like how Honda has all this nooks and crannies for hiding stuff and putting stuff in here. So you do have the two cup holders, a little bit more storage underneath here, some storage underneath that. And you know, you do have a little bit of this piano black trim. You also have this sunshade that's manual, but it is here. So it's very nice that they actually put that in here. Now, if you take a look at the seats, now they look like they're covered with leather, but this is a synthetic leather. You have to go up to the Elite or to the Touring trim to get the uh, leather seat or EXL does that have to. So now you do have this contrast stitching right over here and uh, the seats are nicely profiled. They have a pretty cool uh, design. Now with uh, the other trims, you have the seven or eight seating configuration. Some of them are available in either or. This one is available only in seven seaters. So like you see, you'd had the uh, seat in the middle for the uh, EXL that we've tested out before. You do have the option to have that in some of the other trims as well. Some of them are removable. So the Touring and the Touring Elite have the removable middle seat. And uh, this one just basically has this a little pad over here. Now, what else do we have here? We do have the climate control settings, and then you do have the two USB ports, as well as the regular household outlet, which comes in very handy. Now, this is all electronic climate control, which is really nice. And then, as we've seen on the other trim, the EXL that we've done, we also have this uh, pockets inside of the pockets for like the cell phones and the seat back pockets. What's different about this is check this out. Now I was complaining that the EXL doesn't get the moonroof. Well, this one gets a huge one. So maybe they took it away from that to give it to the trail sport. I like the moonroof feature on it. I also like the back seat. So how do you get to that? Press this button. The seat moves forward and 
voila. Now I sat in the other one, it feels really, really good. So uh, even a full size adult can fit in there and it can actually go for a longer drive. What else we have in the third row seats? We do have the USB charging. We do have the vents for the third row passengers as well as the cup holders, which is really important. And they all have their own lights. Three seat belts in the back. Now, as far as the child seat, now I've noticed that when we had to put two more child seats in my uh, pilot and I wasn't able to do that, because uh, only one seat in the back had the tethers. Now let's see if they change that. So this one has it. I can see that already. Okay, the right over here. I'm touching them. Now does this one have it? Hmm. Nope. So the same thing. So you can put one child seat in the third row seat. Two in the middle. So three child seat. Um, I think may yeah you can put it in the middle seat if you do have the other trim with the eight seating configuration um, lots of headroom too they profile this uh, headliner in such a way that gives room to the people in the back well i wasn't going to but i'm going to get in there and show it to you so here we are inside of this vehicle it's really nice and roomy now i can actually fold this seat down and move it back almost all the way uh, i'll be touching it if i move it all the way back but if i move it just a little bit forward which i can do by releasing this and let's say locking it in place in here i do have enough room now i'm six feet tall and check this out the headroom over here another three inches probably above my head so it's plenty of room inside which you know we didn't have it in the previous generation one well we can't forget about uh, checking out the sound of the door Boom, nice and solid. There's no question about it. Uh, let's check out the front door panel. So we see the same thing as we've seen in the back, basically. Same coloring. Now, you do have the window mirror lock controls. You also have two memory seat settings on here. Um, you do have the metal door handle and you do have the piano black trim. Again, lots of little storage spaces. You know, you have a cup holder, storage right here, storage underneath here. You do have the non-branded stereo in here. You have to go to the higher end trims to actually get the Bose stereo, which I'm really excited to hear how that sounds. Now you do have the power seats and check this out. Now Honda says that these are the most comfortable seats that they've ever made on the Pilot. And I believe that by driving it, it definitely feels like they hold you in place, but they're not too aggressive. They're also comfortable. And here, it is a trail sport trim, so it does have the trail sport uh, embroidered right inside of your really nice stitching, by the way. And then the interior looks pretty cool. Let's check this out. So here's the interior of the 2023 Honda Pilot Trail Sport. I'm going to tell you, it looks very, very nice. Uh, it does have a lot of premium materials. I like that Honda doesn't skimp on putting these higher quality materials inside of their vehicle, especially in those high touch places. So you do have this uh, soft injection plastic molding as far as the dashboard over here. I do like the vents. The vents look kind of rugged, even though they are kind of wrapped in this piano black trim. Um, I like this shelf. The shelf's got the rubber lining inside of here and you can put a lot of stuff in here, including your cell phone. And it's not gonna basically roll around with this rubber trim. And then you have this uh, orange stitching right over here. And then a regular size glove box, pretty deep. And let's check this out. We have the nine inch screen as far as the infotainment system. I'm not gonna complain too much about it because I did it on my previous one. And then this is where you start your vehicle. So that's what we're gonna do. Let's hit the start button. See when you press the brake pedal, it lights up. And then when you start it, it turns red. So that just kind of a, a gives you the idea that the vehicle is running. Now, nothing too crazy, no um, cool animations, which, you know, I like on some of the other ones, uh, but, you know, it comes to life. And what do we have here? Well, first of all, let's start with the steering wheel. So you do have this three-spoke steering wheel, multifunction, you know, it does have a lot of feature. Let's go through that. The steering wheel itself, nicely wrapped with leather. It feels good to the touch. It does have the same orange stitching as on the rest of the vehicle. It does have some piano black in the back. And over here, what we have is basically your media control and what's going on in the um, instrument cluster. So we're gonna check that out, volume control media. This is your cruise control, dynamic cruise control. And right at the bottom, you do have the heated steering wheel button. And then scrolling up on top, you have the big Honda logo. And check this out. So you do have this kind of a hybrid instrument cluster. So half of it is analog, half of it is digital. It's got the seven inch screen 
on your left hand side that's where it says that heat right that's uh, Sirius XM basically that's the setup that is in there right now what's playing well let's see what else we have so we can have the home button and then let's scroll down so you have the range and fuel speed and time audio phone navigation driver's attention all-wheel drive torque distribution seat belt maintenance tire pressure safety support no content, brightness, gauge display settings, warnings, range and fuel. So, uh, I mean, this is your items that you can put inside of this left instrument cluster. Let's say if you wanted to have the all-wheel drive torque distribution, it will change and I will show you just that. Now, around it is your tachometer and on the right-hand side, you have your speedometer. Obviously, in the middle, you have the speed that's displayed digitally over there. And then the vehicle's got 12 miles, 70 degrees outside. We're in the normal mode, which is, by the way, this is the time where I'm going to show you the different drive modes because it does have seven of them. Let's check this out. Sport, normal, econ, snow, trail, sand, tow. So these are the drive modes that are available right now. We're going to put it in sport. I don't hope that I'm going to leave it like this. There you go. Not too much changes. Now it gives you that little cool icon. And then uh, there is a red spot above the miles per hour in the middle that indicates that it is in the sport mode. Uh, it also tells you right above the odometer right there, which mode you're in. So uh, this is your instrument cluster, right? It does have the pedal shifters, by the way, behind the steering wheel. And on the right stock over here, you do have this camera button. Now this is new, we've had it on Hondas before, but uh, they served a little bit different purpose. So if I hit that camera button right there, it opens up your camera view. And it's pretty cool because you can set it up like in your trail mode, this camera will go on automatically if you're under like 15 miles per hour. And it will show you, that's gonna help you navigate, you know, of where you're going. So you can have different angles right over here. You can see the right and left side of the vehicle. And that's especially important if you're maneuvering and between some of the tight terrains, maybe rocks, trees, stuff like this. And then you have the regular mode over here. So this is your front view camera. By the way, this is the top view. This is your front view. Now, if you want to put it in reverse, now it's going to give you the rear view camera over here. And then again, you have the narrow angle, you have the wide angle, and then they have the top view to see where we at. Uh, put it back in park. Camera is nice quality, I got to tell you. It does, uh, I wish the screen was a little bit bigger, but uh, okay, enough with that. So, uh, but the camera is really good quality. Uh, turn that on or off. Let's go back to the screen. So you do have some hard buttons, home, back, audio, back and forth, right? As far as the tracks, and then you can turn this off. That's for the audio, all apps. So you have the phone, FM, Bluetooth, audio. You have the smartphone connection, so it does actually have the Android Auto that's wireless as far as the Apple CarPlay is the same thing. So wireless connection for the phone, trip computer, USB, general settings, vehicle settings, compass. Let's see if it does have anything that's uh, maybe trail sport specific, but it looks like, you know, it's a standard features like you're seeing on the uh, other pilot. So you do have the vehicle settings over here and then you can customize tons of stuff so driver assist setup system keyless assist lighting setup door window setup driving position setup tailgate setup maintenance info you know all that stuff you can actually set this up in here let's say meter setup right so you can adjust outside temperature display right now we can do negative five degrees minus four minus three so i guess this is like if you check it out and say hey because of the engine temperature, the temperature reading is by, um, I don't know, a few degrees higher or lower. You can set this up kind of to calibrate it. Well, this is, I never thought of that, but um, I guess it might be a, a cool feature. So uh, how do we go back? There's a back button over here, and then you go back to different uh, settings over here. Let's go back to general settings. And then again, tons of settings that you can uh, check out. Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, you know, somebody connected the iPhone 4 before on that. It's actually pretty easy to do. Matter of fact, you know what, let's check this out. I have Android, so I'm gonna hit Android Auto. There's a no device connected, connect device. All right, I wanna make sure that my uh, Bluetooth is on and I'll turn that on. And right now, 
at the bottom of like a thousand different things that I have, you know, it shows up right on my phone. It shows Honda Pilot. So all I have to do is hit Honda Pilot. It says pairing. It's going to ask me for a pairing code. I want to make sure that it's the same thing. I hit pair on the phone. And there you go. Would you like to enable Android Auto? Yes, I would. And here you go. We're going to connect it. I believe it's in the... Oh, there you go. It just showed up. Android Auto. Continue. Here it is. Here. I told you this is my uh, local dealership. I'm five minutes away from home. Again, this is Norm Reeves Honda in Port Charlotte, Florida. Here's your apps for Android Auto. Nice, bright, vivid display. No question about it. Wish the screen was a little bit bigger. Stop it, Matt. All right, USB, uh, no device connected, but you get the drill, right? System updates over the air, by the way. Um, you can connect to the Wi-Fi and actually get this vehicle updated, but that's not something new. We've had it done in 2019 as well. Smart shortcuts, not sure what that is. Your vehicle provides quick access to call, music, navigation, suggestions tailored to you. Okay, that's too tacky for me. And uh, at the end, you have the cabin talk, which by the way, that's a pretty cool feature. You have the microphone. You can speak through the speakers that projects your voice into the rear speaker. So in case the kids tell you that they can't hear you, turn that on, turn the volume up, make sure that they will. So this is your infotainment system. And right below here, you have set of vents, hazard lights, and then here's your climate control settings. So you have your heated seats on uh, this particular one, no ventilated on the trail sport. Um, and then you have the tri-zone climate control. So you have two zones for the front, one zone in the back. Uh, you can separate them all, of course. Now it's in the sync mode, but I can unsync it. Press this button over here so you can have you know, 60, 73 in here, 66 over there. And if I want to have the uh, rear settings right over here and set the temperature at, let's see, this is the temperature for the rear, 65. And I have three different temperatures then, right? Now you can uh, turn on the rear fan on and off, the rear lock so nobody plays with it if you lock it. And then, you know, that's pretty much it. Scrolling down over here, you have the USB-C. USB port, 12 volt outlet. Now there's a little nuke over here that you can put stuff in. Maybe that's a good place to put your key, right? I usually throw the key somewhere in the cup holders. And by the way, this is your Honda key, the new Honda key. So you have the lock on, lock, remote start, hold for the power lift gate, hold for the panic button, Honda in the back. Now in the back, you'll see this is a key number two. That means that uh, this is a driver two. And uh, when you press the unlock button and you have the memory seat set in two right here, uh, it's gonna adjust the settings to driver two. So it's gonna adjust your seat. But maybe that's a good place to put the key in. There you go. Well, if it didn't have all these tags, it would fit perfectly in here. But right underneath here, you do have the phone charger, wireless phone charger. And there you go. It's charging 74, I'm good. Okay. Um, you do have the cup holders. Again, this is your push button transmission shifter, right? So you have the regular gears. And then this is where you change your drive modes. We went through that already. You can turn off your uh, automatic start stop engine. You have the brake hold button, you have the um, emergency brake or the parking brake. And then you have the hill descent assist. You also have the hill start assist, you know, in this vehicle. And that helps you out again with navigating some of the trails. Huge storage compartment right down below. Again, this is rubber line. So the stuff that you put in there is not gonna shift. And then again, this is nice and soft for your arms. Now inside of the mirror over here, you do have the home link with three different buttons. So you can program three different devices to it. And then you have the tilt and telescoping moonroof. And check this out, this is huge, right? This is the first time that Honda actually has a panoramic moonroof on the Pilot. And super exciting, because a lot of people were complaining about it. It, it lets tons of light inside of here, and it, it actually makes this cabin more airy. It's, it's brighter, definitely. And then what else do we have up on top? So you can control your lights either separately or you know with this main button 
over here and then of course you do have your sunglass holder that also serves right right here hello how are you this serves basically as your rear view mirror for your kids so you can see the cabin All right then you do have the illuminated mirrors in case you want to check your makeup on the trail and uh, this is it this is the interior of it i think it looks awesome let's see how it drives gonna tell you guys if it drives as well as it looks then we do have a winning combination here so let's talk about the different trim levels that uh, pilot is available and for this year's model and then we have the sport starting at 39 150 exl 41 950 both of those start with the front wheel drive vehicle trail sport is an all-wheel drive comes as standard equipment 48 350 plus destination plus this one has this lounge package which includes the decals the crossbars uh, the little bit different fender flares the trim underneath here that uh, seat backings uh, so that adds a little bit this one is listed just over $51,000 I'm gonna list everything that it has now the touring again this starts with the uh, front wheel drive 46 450 and then the elite which is the top one it is all-wheel drive starts at $52,030 so again this is not a super expensive vehicles it does have a lot of features that come standard with it and let's take this for a spin like this uh, 360 camera makes a huge difference i've been asking for it like when i was reviewing previous uh, generations hondas whether it was a pilot passport odyssey i go like this can definitely benefit from 360. now we have it we also have the sunroof or moonroof panoramic moonroof which is a huge deal and uh, i think now we're, we're only missing a little bit larger infotainment screen but uh, i'm gonna stop right there so um let's back it out in here and let's see how tight the turning diameter is on this vehicle and hopefully we're going to be able to check this out right over here all right so i'm going to turn the wheel all the way and see if we're going to make it it's pretty tight we're going to hit it hey, we made it that actually is pretty pretty impressive as far as the turning radius on it let's take it quickly on the road to see how this vehicle handles now i don't expect it to handle a whole lot of different than the uh, exl that i've done as it is the same powertrain it does have a little bit different tires uh, differently tuned suspension but I, I don't know if it uh, comes alive with uh, the regular modes or you have to put it in the sport mode or trail mode which you know unfortunately I don't have any trails in here but we'll check that out it feels really good on the road I don't hear any of that tire noise I was afraid maybe you can hear a little bit of that buzz from the tires because of their being a little bit more aggressive but uh, no not such a thing I, I don't know if it's this model I forgot how it was with the EXL it might feel a little bit stiffer but I do have it in the sport mode I am actually gonna switch it in uh, the trail mode and just a little bit even though I don't have any trails in here just to see if it makes any difference if how the steering responds or the throttle responses on that you know acceleration we checked that out on the previous one so there you go you can uh, hear the engine definitely get it up to 60 miles per hour this is not a true zero to 60 test because we went from rolling uh, but it does have enough pick up and go to get you merged in uh, traffic that's uh, no question about it uh, once it gets to speed and the engine kind of levels off at about that 2000 rpms it's really nice and quiet but if you gun it if you hit it so hear that it should reduce it and let's hear the engine it actually is a pretty cool engine sound <laughs> you know um, i like it uh, but it is uh, noticeable so that's something you know definitely to consider you know when you're looking for a vehicle like this but i always uh, recommend that you yourself can i go and test drive this vehicle whether it's this or other trim levels or should drive pretty much the same let me actually switch it to the trail mode and uh, let's see what it does to the steering now i'm not sure if it's going to make any difference especially that we're not in the trail mode but one thing that i noticed it turns on that uh, camera right away so on the trail if you're navigating through the terrain this is a really important feature to have and i'm glad that honda has done it uh, other things while we're waiting here for the light tons of room like right? the seats they are comfortable uh, 
uh, I gotta tell you, they're not really holding me in place a lot, but you know, then again, you know, unless you're on the trail, you might get bounced around a little bit. Not too bad though. So what else it does? You know, when I put the trail mode, it turns off the traction control. Here's one thing that we didn't talk about is the gas mileage. And it does have a combined gas mileage of 20, that's 18 in the city, 23 on the expressway. It is a V6, naturally aspirated. It's a fairly decent displacement. So, I mean, this is fairly good for uh, this pilot. It's about a mile better than mine gets, so. There you go. I don't see any difference, noticeable difference when driving this in the trail mode. Maybe it would be more pronounced when actually taking it on the trail versus you know just checking it out on the road uh, i think the throttle response was a little bit different uh, the steering wheel actually felt a little bit lighter than on the sport mode the sport mode actually tightens it up a little bit and it probably changes the settings in this uh, transmission of how it actually switches gears so i mean those would be the differences um, obviously you know on the normal driving uh, i wouldn't use the trail mode unless you're in the situation where you need to uh, but overall a great driving vehicle i don't even mind that engine noise i think it's uh, it's actually pretty cool to have that to have that uh, little growl of the engine in here so anyways thank you guys for watching i really appreciate every single view that you give me and i would really appreciate if you subscribe to my channel that helps me out to get access to more events like i really was envy of the people that went to uh, sedona arizona and I, I watched them testing those vehicles out in real uh, world situations on the trail that's what i want to do and i know you're going to help me with it because i have a great group of followers over 7300 right now so thank you thank you thank you again by the way i am going this week to chicago auto show to check out this new grand highlander so if you like watching videos like this don't forget to subscribe and if you like this video share it with your friends family and hit that like button i'll see you in my next video cheers